Hello. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. Um, it is great to be here at the Art Gallery of New South Wales once more. Um, I have been dragged out of retirement, but then I was never one to retire quietly after such a noisy and irritating career. So um, I have let my hair down, as you can see. It's what you do in retirement, apparently. So um, I'm here tonight uh, in the guise of Australia's uh, Lady Dada to present a taste of Dada poetry. And uh, you might wonder what my credentials are. Well, um, in the Wikipedia, it says that Dada is based on irrationality and negation of the accepted laws of beauty. And so am I. <laughs> so, to present a selection of Dada poems and to accompany me tonight are two hands attached to a Mr. Stu Hunter. Please make him welcome. In fact, Stu recently became a Dada. He's, uh, he's a Dada, and the daughter of the Dada is here tonight, so uh, <laughs> congratulations. And welcome to the planet, little Ivy Dada. She's here too. So, uh, Stu, very generous of you to come here. He's here on paid modernity leave. <laughs> come on, come on, that's an art show. <laughs> it's free, and I'm retired. It's not getting better. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, uh, you know, you've got to be, these, this, I've done this crowd before, they're very shy. You've got to, they're, they're up here, very cultured, highly cultured. They're like yogurt. They're all like yogurt, these people. <laughs> it's not like jazz, you know. Well, you would never see a room this full, would you, when you play jazz? <laughs> so you have to watch your language. Well, you haven't got a microphone, so just watch my language. That would be the best thing to do. Okay, so without further ado, or perhaps a little bit of ado. The ado's going quite well tonight, do you think? Yeah. Oh, no, bugger the ado. Let's go straight to the point. Now, I hope you enjoy these fruits of my labor. And I must say that labor fruit is one of my favorite foods. <laughs> I, like, I like it like this, the new do, I like it. Uh, now, just a word of, uh, a word of warning. Uh, some of these poems are under constructivism. <laughs> We're really gonna need that tonight, you know. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, um, now, there are rules to constructing a, a data poem. What you do is you uh, choose your source text, you cut it up, you throw it in the air, let it go down, stick it all back together again, and you have a data poem. Now, for my first data poem, I have uh, selected a source text from many of the great Australian singers, songwriters, poets, and wordsmiths, and cut that up, came down, and I've ended up with my first poem entitled, I Love a Sunburnt Movement at the Station. <laughs> I had written him a letter, which I had for want of better, left my heart to the sappers in Kaysan. <laughs> Traveling in a fried out combi, Lying in a den in Bombay with a slack jaw and not much to say. Well, the last plane out of Sydney is almost gone. I'm going to hit some Hong Kong mattress for all it's worth. There's a safe way up the corner and a Woolies down the street and a brand new place they've opened up where they regulate the heat. Oh, give me a home among the gum trees with lots of plum trees, a clothesline at the back, a veranda at the front, and an old rocking chair sitting on the beach drinking rocket fuel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the voice. Try and understand it. Make a noise. Make it clear, for there's nothing more morbid, lonesome and drear than to stand at the bar of the pub with no beer. Oh yes, I've breathed the mountain air, man. Of travel, I've had my share, man. Oh, I've been everywhere. 
I've been to cities that never close down. From New York to Rio and old London town. And the first thing you know, I'll be back in Bow River again. We're all someone's daughter. We're all someone's son. How long can we look at each other? She took me in. She gave me breakfast. But he just smiled and gave me a Vegemite sandwich. I once smoked a Danaman cigar. But baby, that was years ago. Yes, I love a sunburned country. A land of sweeping generalizations. Mr. Stu Hunter. So I think you see where we're going tonight, don't you, by now? I think uh, you see the essence of data is the juxtaposition of incongruous entities brought together for no apparent reason, much like you people here tonight, I would say. So I think we'll move swiftly on to poem number two. And uh, in fact, I would have to say, when push comes to shove, my entire life is a little bit like a, uh, a data poem. So I've, uh, I'm going to read a little bit from my own diary. Now, I do spend a lot of time on my diary. My, I'm up to uh, January 2013 at the moment. <laughs> so I'll just uh, turn to today's date, and we'll see how everything turned out for me, OK? Uh, Stu, I'll need some, some diary music. Have you got some diary music? That's great. I, I take my hat off to you, but I have to put it on. Hat off to you. Okay. Wednesday, the 21st of September, 4 p.m. I checked my diary. Apparently, I had a gig at the Art Gallery of New South Wales tonight. Well, that was news to me. So I sat around waiting for inspiration. You know, you can wait for inspiration till the cows come home. Just what is it about procrastination that attracts beef? Hmm. 5 p.m. With no time to lose, I headed to the gallery. I quickly walked through the Mad Square exhibition. I looked around me and I said, oh, that's gross. Immediately, I thought, what well, silly thing to say. I quickly made a mental note that I would definitely not use that material here tonight. 6.30 p.m., I start my talk. The Lady Dada gag seemed to go down really well. I was about to go into the Mad Square material when suddenly, Stu Hunter took a solo. p.m. Flacco checks his watch. <laughs> Stu Solo took up a bit more time. Only 20 more minutes to fill. <laughs> 7 p.m. Having finished my talk, I needed to get out of there quick. Real quick. So I hailed a taxi. <whistles> and a very attractive taxi it was too. <laughs> I said, Chinatown, please. And the taxi driver said, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? I thought, Houston, we have a problem. He said, 
I see dead people. I said, what we've got here is a failure to communicate. Then he said, one time at band camp, I stuck a flute in my pussy. I thought, Toto, I've got a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. So I said, hasta la vista, baby. And he said, show me the money, show me the money. I said, open the pod bay doors, Hal. He said, use the force, Luke. I said, look, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. He said, but I could have been somebody. I could have been somebody. I could have been a container. I said, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. 7.15 PM. I got out of the cab. And well, to make a long story short, Red and Scarlet split up in the end. It's a cruel one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, in Germany, Dada went hand in hand with German Expressionism. You might be familiar with that. The uh, German Expressionist films, I really like Nosferatu, Max Schreck. In Nosferatu, I've always wanted to play Max Schreck. Just the whole, the whole character like that. I think I'm at the age I could do it now, too. It's kind of pre-death. You know, <laughs> pressed right up against it like that, you know. Corpse with muscle tone, that's all I am these days. Now, uh, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Have you seen that film, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari? Fantastic film. It's a film about German interior decoration. It's just wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Oh, there was a lot of sequels. I don't know if you know this. A lot of sequels planned for The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. There was The Edwardian Dressing Table of Dr. Caligari, and The Mahogany Davenport of Dr. Caligari, The Walnut Buffet of Dr. Caligari. Oh, he was going to do the whole house out just on sequels. It's amazing. The Fluted Pedestal of Dr. Calgary, The Federation Bookcase of Dr. Calgary. I'm not going to stop because I'm retired and I don't care. <laughs> the Victorian Dumbwaiter of Dr. Calgary, The Eames Replica Office Chair of Dr. Calgary. Need I go on? I'm sorry. Enough of my ramblings. Look, I will freely admit that no matter how hard I tried working on these data poems myself, there is no way in the world I can top the great masters of data poetry. So what I would like to present now is a selection from just a few of the uh, genuine masters of, uh, of data poetry. First of all, a couple of poems by uh, Kurt Schwitters. I'm sure you've heard of Kurt. Um, Kurt actually wrote a wonderful essay about art criticism, which I'll quote a little bit of that first. So um, this is uh, Kurt Schwitters on art critics. Critics resemble those justly popular men, the schoolmasters. He feeds on artistic faults to the greater profit of the sheep farming business. Every critic has an umbrella. The umbrella is used by the critic for the purpose of turning it upside down. Critics do not have to give up their umbrellas when they go to an art exhibition. The umbrellas do, however, have to take an examination. Only umbrellas with holes are admitted to art criticism. The more holes, the more rain. The more rain, the greater pain. The greater pain, the more criticism. To return to the sheep, critics are a special kind of human being. To be a critic, one has to be born to it. Critics are sheep born, sheep suckled by a school mom, and half a sheep when faced with a work of art. The difference between artist and critic is this. The artist creates, the critic bleats. <coughs> no, no. <coughs> it's supposed to be a sheep. A sheep, <coughs> no. At least you've got the methane. Oh. Amateurs, I don't know. So this is Kurt, this is his first poem that I'm gonna do for you now. Uh, entitled Anna Bloom, written in 1919. Anna Bloom by Kurt Schwitters. O oh, beloved of my 27 senses, I love your you, ye, you, your I, your you, my we. This belongs, by the way, elsewhere. Who 
are you, uncounted female? You are, are you? People say you are. Let them say on. They don't know a hawk from a handsaw. You wear your hat upon your feet and walk upon your hands. Upon your hands you walk. Hello. Your red dress, sewn up in white pleats. Red. I love Anna Bloom red. I love your, you, you, ye, you, your, I, your, you, my, we. This belongs, by the way, in an icy fire. Red Bloom. Red Anna Bloom. What do people say? Prize question number one. Anna Bloom has a bird. Number two, Anna Bloom is red. Number three, what color is the bird? Hmm? Blue is the color of your yellow hair. Red is the cooing of your green bird. You simple girl in a simple dress. You dear green beast. I love your, you, ye, you, your, I, your, you, my, we. This belongs, by the way, in the chest of fires. Anna Bloom, Anna, A, double N A. I trickle your name. Your name drips like softest tallow. Do you know, Anna? Do you know already? You can also be read from behind, and you, you the loveliest of all, are from behind as you are from before. A. Double N A, double N A A, N N A, N N A. Tallow trickles caressingly down my back. And a bloom, you trickle beast. I love your, you, ye, you, your, I, your, you, my. We? Oui? Kurt Schwitters, ladies and gentlemen, he wrote that a long time ago. <clears throat> I think we'll do one more of uh, Kurt's poems here. This is a, a poem called um, Anxiety Plays, a Dramatic Fragment, um, a term which also perfectly describes me, I think. Anxiety Plays by Kurt Schwitters. Sir, yes? You are under arrest, sir? No. I shall shoot, sir. No. I shall shoot, sir. No. I shall shoot, sir. No. I hate you. No. I shall crucify you. Not so. I shall poison you. Not so. I shall murder you. Not so. Think of the winter. Never. I am going to kill you, as I said. Never. I shall shoot. You have already said that once. Now come along. You can't arrest me. Why not? You can take me into custody, but no more. Then I shall take you into custody, by all means. B allows himself to be taken into custody and led away. The stage grows dark. The audience feels duped, and there are catcalls and whistles. The chorus cries, where's the author? Throw him out. Rubbish! This next piece, this uh, data poem, is written by Dr. Walter Cerner, and it's called Best Paving is Red Blessing, by Dr. Walter Cerner. Mouthful of wine, length 63 centimeters, into red improved nostrils, spat, cat, because ensemble courageous, Kuno whispers to plump posterior tangle, which sweaty underarm escapes. Bent forward, he thunders. Sibby screamed out by nature, immensely hemiglobes upwards now. Burning petal brushes, delightful. And elsewhere caressed abdomen and omen. Abdomen and omen, abdomen. Unsurpassed licks his lingua, fattest thighs along Isidore. Oh, how I love life's rabble in the evening. Natural element. Kirch was Ogles the oh so distant delta folds of Zuzi. Destiny surges, fiddle brandy round the corner, sheet metal lurches out and goes aloft with some effort. 
Sparsely tufted lower half sways tactfully this way. Fidelity is no hollow tooth. A cross between child and nine pin. Madame V expertly twines a glass in Roger's fingers, crushes the whole thing, stool to her, quart, athwart, quart, athwart, what, athwart. What, 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 what. By the way, take away venereal disease and coitus would become universally popular as a parlor game. You could get it in the shops. Buster! That was Dr. Walter Cerner. I mean, you would be a bit worried if he was your doctor, wouldn't you? <laughs> Fidelity is no hollow tooth. I mean, what does that mean? It's not going to cure anything, is it? Uh, I think we'll try another one. I, I, I think these are going quite well. Um, well, from here, from here back. Just the two of us and Imens, we love this stuff. Um, this one is called The Guest Expulsed by Hands Up. It's a strange name, is it? Hands, hands Up. Very cruel parents. Imagine he goes into the bank. Oh, yes, I don't, you know, what's your name, sir? Hands up. <laughs> Gravestones I carry on my head. From water bearing mortal clay, I cast offending Adam out to pass the time, 12 times a day. Standing in light up to the hilt, I leapt out through my mouth perforce and carry owls to Athens town. Harness myself before my horse. In line with time's polarity, I follow in disguise lead glaze the spirit of hilarity. I mingle camphor of my own in with the elder pith of time and into all eternity, innards and upwards still I climb. Hands up. All right, this next poem was written by Richard Hulsenbeck, whom uh, Tristan Zara described as his anti-friend. And it's called, This is How Flat the World Is, by Richard Hulsenbeck. This is how flat the world is. The bladder of the swine, and now the vicar closing his pants. Rataplan, rataplan! And the hair growing out of his ears, and the billy goat being catapulted from heaven and the grandmother lifting her breasts. This is the moment when we blow flour from our tongue and we cry and the head from the top beam, here it goes, without aim. The vicar again, he closes his pants, rataplan, rataplan. He closes them good and the hair, how it grows from his nose and his ears and the heaven again and the thing falls down and the grandmother lifts now her bosom, the flower. We blow from our nostrils and tongue, and we cry, and it wanders around, and the head on the top beam around us, and the end of the ass as it blows, and it cracks, and the mugget of priests in heaven. And the pants of the vicar are closing, rataplan, rataplan, and he closes his pants, and the hair, how it shoots from his hearing. The flap of the pants, of the vicar's pants, the flaps of the pants are closing, oh, the flaps of the pants are closing, and this is how flat the world is. And that was a poem by David Hasselhoff. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Richard Horsenbeck. I always get those two data poets mixed up. I'm sorry about that. Uh, now, the German poet uh, Hugo Ball said this. Words emerge, shoulders of words, legs, arms, hands of words. One shouldn't let too many words out. A line of poetry is a chance to get rid of all the filth that clings to this accursed language. And I've un certainly unloaded a sh my fair share of those words tonight, I think. And this got me thinking, what happens when you get all the great Dada poets together, cut up all the poems, throw them in the air, and see what comes out then. Well, I tried it a couple of times and I just ended up with a logical sentence. But after a while, <laughs> after a while I did get one poem. This is a data poem created from the mouths of the artists themselves. And this poem is written by George Gross, Kurt Schwitters, Marcel Duchamp, Hugo Ball, and with generous helpings from Tristan Zara's Dado Manifesto, 
tonight presented by me, the Dada, Uncle Festo. <laughs> All right, this poem is entitled, Dada is an Armadillo. No more painters, no more scribblers, no more sculptors, no more royalists, no more radicals, no more anarchists, no more socialists, no more communists, no more democrats, no more republicans, no more arms, no more police, no more nations, nothing left. Dada is a virgin microbe that penetrates with the insistence of air into all the spaces that reason has not been able to fill with words or conventions. All words are other people's inventions. You may be gay, sad, afflicted, joyous, melancholy, or dada. You can be romantic, dreamy, weary, eccentric, a businessman, skinny, transfigured, vain, amiable, or dada. Dada is here, there, and a little everywhere, such as it is, with its faults, with its personal differences and distinctions, which it accepts and views with indifference. Self-kleptomania. Man's normal condition is Dada. Knowledge of all the means rejected up until now by the shamefaced sex of comfortable compromise and good manners is Dada. Abolition of logic, which is the dance of those impotent to create, is Dada. Absolute and unquestionable faith in every god that is the immediate product of spontaneity is Dada. To divest one's church of every useless, cumbersome accessory to spit out disagreeable or amorous ideas like a luminous waterfall or coddle them with the extreme satisfaction that it doesn't matter in the least. With the same intensity in the thicket of one's soul, pure of insects for blood, well-born and gilded with bodies of archangels is Dada is an armadillo. That's a poem written by absolutely everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, uh, if you are intending to see the Mad Square exhibition tonight, um, you would do well to heed the words of uh, Mr. Max Ernst, who said, and I quote, I might stop doing that because those parentheses are freaking me out. A Dada exhibition, another one. What's the matter with everyone wanting to make a museum piece out of Dada? Dada was a bomb. Can you imagine anyone around a half a century after a bomb explodes wanting to collect all the pieces, sticking it together and displaying it? Well, yes, we can. So I hope you've enjoyed these poems here tonight. For Duchamp made the urinal, I just took the piss. <laughs> and for my final poem this evening, I thought we'd return to the theme of Australian Dadaist poetry. Uh, now, Dada was also known for um, experiments with sound, sound poetry, so I'd like to present Australia's national anthem, and Stu Hunter here will supply a cachet of sounds to enhance the work. So it's a very subtle piece, Stu. Are you ready for this? <laughs> All right. This is Australia's national anthem. Please remain seated. Here we go. Australians all, let us, for we are, and we've golden and wealth for our, by, our, abounds with natures of beauty, and in histories let every advance fair. In joyful, mm. then let us advance Australia. Uh, there will be no carbon tax under the government I lead. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Good night. Mr. Stu Hunter, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Stu Hunter.